I'm here in Auckland, New Zealand, in the Albert Park, the heart of Auckland. And I'm here to test something out. This bad boy here and its camera system. The OnePlus Nord has arrived in New Zealand and I want to check out if the camera system is any good. And I think we should start with a selfie. So this is the selfie video on OnePlus Nord with the 32 megapixel f2.5 sensor and it has a second sensor on board which is an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor which is also f2.5 but a little bit smaller within 1 over 4 inch instead of 1 over 2.34 inch uh, sensor and uh, hope it is recording also via the microphone that I have attached via USB Type-C. If it is not, then the camera software of OnePlus has not the ability to record audio from an external USB-C um, microphone. And uh, this is the front-facing camera, the main camera. I will now switch to the ultra-wide. And uh, this is the ultra-wide camera of the OnePlus Nord, 8 megapixels. And again, both front cameras are recording by default in 1080p, 30 frames per second. And they should have uh, quite a nice stabilization on board. The front-facing camera has also the option to record in 4K 60 frames per second, then without any stabilization, which is unusual as the backside camera can only record 4K up to 30 frames per second. The main sensor on the back allows shooting in 4K up to 30 frames per second, features optical image stabilization and a face detection autofocus. OnePlus features also a super steady mode, which I will try out right now. The ultra steady or super stable mode, how OnePlus calls it, records in 1080p with the ultra wide camera, which does not feature any OIS or autofocus. It has a view field of 119 degrees. It's quite sunny here in Auckland. We are at the end of winter and the beginning of spring, but it's still a bit windy and yeah, but the sun is out as you can see here. Uh, what do you think about the super stable mode and uh, the quality overall? The main sensor is able to capture slow motion with 1080p and 240 frames per second. There's no other choice. You cannot configure the slow motion. It's always 1080p, 240 frames per second. Zooming is done entirely digital as a crop on the 48 megapixel sensor. And 2 times zoom looks still okayish, but as soon as you get to the 5 times zoom, it is like with pain acceptable. Everything above 5 times zoom is just ugly and shouldn't be used. One thing that I noticed pretty quickly with the OnePlus Nord is that the shutter speed is very good in comparison to the Xperia 10 Mark II, which has some times a lag. The only lag that I can see here, which is a slight lag, is when you want to capture 48 megapixels, so the full resolution of the main sensor. Otherwise, the shutter speed is pretty quickly, but what is pretty trash is the mm, macro, 2 megapixel macro camera. I cannot get any really sharp results with it. It is sometimes, however, always have the feeling on the display it looks sharp and I will take a look at the image it is not sharp so I'm not sure what's going on it's the shutter speed too low the aperture is definitely lower so it gets darker if you go into the macro mode it's a bit of a disappointment I would say because I'd like to shoot uh, close-ups of flowers here in the wonderful garden of the Albert Park but it's not possible with the macro camera to get really good shots out of it so is the macro camera unusable 
maybe not, but it is a gimmick, I would say. Interestingly enough, the front camera, the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, can record in 4K. 8 megapixels are usually not enough to record in 4K, so they are using some kind of upscaling technology, I would say. Um, or it has very bad stabilization. I'm holding it here right in my hand, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I think the quality is okay for videos, but when it comes to images, uh, it gets a bit soft and uh, I think this ultra wide camera is not very usable when it comes to fo taking photos or selfies. If you take a look at the ultra wide angle camera, it suffers from the same problems that all of the ultra wide angle cameras in this price point around 400 euros or dollars suck at. It's the edges that are quite unsharp and as soon as you zoom in you pretty much see that it's falling apart. In the middle it's pretty much okay but on the sides, on the edges, it is what it is. It could have been better if OnePlus would have just saved the bucks for a better camera, ultra wide camera and just left out the macro cam. Or they could have invested into a real telephoto lens instead of just a sensor that crops in because telephoto lens would have been better especially in daylight when it comes to two times zoom, three times zoom even and cropping on to the telephoto also looks better in most parts than cropping into this main sensor five times is barely usable I would say and everything beyond this is unusable. The telephoto would also help in bokeh or portrait mode because for some reason it is using the ultra wide angle for portrait mode which just looks very strange and it's not very good. When you crop into the normal sensor and use the portrait mode there it is usable. But it's not always perfect. All in all, the OnePlus Nord works fine in daylight shots. The main sensors are pretty good for a mid-range device. The 48 megapixel sensor takes uh, good, nice shots with good HDR and some boosted but pleasing colors. The same goes for the 32 megapixel selfie cam. It performs good despite not having any autofocus. It has a pretty big aperture and sensor size, pleasing colors and good HDR. The 8 megapixel ultra wide cameras on the back and front are exactly what you can expect on a mid range device. So, usually, mid rangers don't ship two of them. Good for ultra wide angle photos, but don't expect sharp results when taking a look at those images at 100%. The macro sensor is a gimmick, its resolution, aperture, and overall quality is just bad. The depth sensor also seems like not in a perfect condition. The blurry background bokeh effect suffers from issues I did not see on other devices in the same price range, especially when using the ultra wide angle camera you can get unpredictable results. The main sensor is better, sadly sometimes even better if you block the depth sensor. In the next video I will also test the low light performance during the night with the OnePlus Nord cameras and will also test the night sight or the night mode of the OnePlus Nord. And if you have questions, you can ask them in the comment section. Otherwise, like, subscribe and all this shenanigans. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.